What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be building a budget custom keyboard that cost me just $98 to build. Yes, no more $600 plus builds. 98 bucks, under $100 if you're on a budget. So today we're going to go through it all, talk about the case, the components, all that stuff, in case you're trying to build a budget keyboard as well. So the star of the show is the TM680, or also known as the Tom680, for being a nice and compact 68 key layout that includes a hot swap PCB with dedicated arrow keys, a volume knob, it's USB-C, you got full RGB lighting with underglow on the backside and on the sides, plus the fact that it's programmable. You can create macros. And the case, frame, PCB come complete with stabilizers, built all in for just $48 when I got it from AliExpress. Prices have fluctuated. It was actually originally just $44, but we'll talk about the price roundup later on. But just the fact is, this is a crazy good value and a great starting point for getting into custom keyboards. I actually discovered this on Reddit last month in July. Someone posted this build in the subreddit and I thought, well, hot damn, I want to do the exact same thing for a video. So I picked up the components for a budget build, but this board has gained a ton of steam lately. There's been tons of people buying this case and you can probably see why. So included inside the box is a USB-C cable. Nothing too fancy, just a braided white one to match the build. You can also buy the board in black, pink, and a transparent housing, by the way. But when it's powered on, you'll see the RGB lighting shining nice and bright. There is software to control it, but we'll talk about the lighting later on. Now, one of the sacrifices this board makes to stay on the budget side of things is definitely with the materials used. The case is plastic, uh, the frame is a standard aluminum, but the PCB is north-facing, which could cause compatibility issues with some keycap sets out there. But again, for beginners, this should be okay. The hot swap PCB is thankfully five pin though, so you won't have any problems when it comes to picking out your switches. Definitely happy to see that. Speaking of which, I'm also happy to see that a budget keyboard also features a volume knob. Easily adjust volume up and down on the fly, press it in to mute it. There's a glowing ring around it as well. And like I said before, on each side is a little bit of underglow, plus a zone on the back side for just some extra flair on your desktop. Taking the TM680 apart is as simple as removing the eight screws on the plate. This isn't necessary at all, by the way, for building your keyboard. Literally, you can just buy switches and keycaps and be on your way. But inspecting the inside is gonna be for those who want to mod it a little bit and make it sound better. Since it's just a plastic case, it does just pop apart with a little bit of force. It'll then separate into two parts, the bottom housing and the top housing with the plate and PCB. But you'll see the bottom is empty. It's pretty much just the plastic casing with nothing going on at all. And the top frame is holding the plate and the PCB together with just three screws if you want to remove them. Underneath, you can see the hot swap switch plugs, obviously pre-soldered for you. Got a strip of LEDs up top for the underglow. That's where it's going to shine underneath and get diffused out the bottom of the case. Now, one thing I did was add a little bit of polyfill inside the bottom of the plastic housing. Uh, it's just to help, you know, absorb some of that plastic you stand on the case has because it's pretty hollow overall. Just so you know, dampen it a little bit. And polyfill is very cheap and expensive. Odds are if you have a dog, you know, their dog toys are filled with polyfill. So if you're like me, it's everywhere. But you can also just use like a thin layer of foam. It's actually what I wanted to do, but I'm fresh all out. So I got to pick some more up. Anything just to really put on the bottom under the PCB to just absorb sound is going to be great with that plastic case. Next thing I want to do is we're going to take it apart and I want to start to clip and do the band-aid mod and lube our stabilizers. You'll see inside there's actually a pre-cut layer of foam underneath the frame already that gets sandwiched between the PCB. Again, a nice addition for the price of this, but our stabilizers are plate mount here and they're definitely going to need some love. So I clipped the feet to prevent them from being louder, added some lube to each wire in the housing inside, and then did a band-aid mod underneath the stabilizers, plus an additional pad on the PCB to where the stabilizers line up and sit. Again, all just extra things to help improve and dampen the sound. And it's called a Band-Aid mod because people just cut up and use Band-Aid strips to act as that like layer of like a dampening pad underneath the PCB. So you can use that. Um, I always just use medical tape. That's what I've always used. So you can use really whatever you want. Uh, just basic household items you probably have that you could repurpose for your boards. You don't have to go out and buy Band-Aids. Like I said, I'm sure you have them. Next up, let's talk switches. To keep the budget friendliness build in mind, I went with Gateron Milky Yellow Switches. And the pack of 70 from Novel Keys was just $16. These are fantastic for the price, especially if you lube them. And they're often referred to as butter on a budget in the community because you really just can't beat a smooth linear feel for under $20. I did already lube these a while back, but again, like modding our stabilizers and adding some polyfill, it is optional. But you will definitely benefit from lubing your switches because it'll just make them way better. Unless they're clicky switches, then no. 
And by the way, these are called Milky because they have that slightly opaque top shell to them. Other gather on Milky Yellow switches out there may have a black bottom shell, uh, but the Milky top is the main difference out there, and that's why they're called Milky, if you were curious. There are obviously hundreds of other switch types out there that you can use in your build, but as I said, it's really hard to beat a pack of 70 for just $16. And I prefer linear switches, so I'll be content with the smooth linear response and quiet profile. Once they're all popped into the PCB, next step is adding keycaps. And oftentimes, keycaps are the most expensive part of a build. They're stupid expensive, and most GMK sets can cost anywhere from like $1 to $200. But today, keeping the budget in mind, I'm doing what 75% of the keyboard community does, and it's what I said I'd never do. Use a $36 set knockoff Con Momo. And these knockoff sets are known as a clone set meaning they're copied from the original creator and then sold for considerably less, but it also means they're more readily available and more justifiable to someone who wants to get in the custom keyboards, but doesn't want to wait 18 months for their $109 set of keycaps to arrive on their porch. Maybe, if there's no delays. I personally don't endorse clones by any means, but I understand where the consumers are coming from and why it's gotten to the point where clone sets are a viable option. This set here is what the original Reddit post I talked about used, and I love how they look with the navy and pinkish sub-legends. This set has 148 keycaps included, different colored spacebar, modifiers, arrow keys, so you can build it to your liking. So I went with the navy set, because I think it looks really great and stands out nicely with the all-white build. So here we are, just like that, $98 for a really nice and compact uh, feature pack build as well. So now we'll do a sound test you could hear how this keyboard sounds with the lubed milky Gateron yellow switches inside our TM680. Really not too bad overall. Again, considering the price, um, I've heard a lot worse. Yeah, I've heard better, but that's also talking keyboards that are five times the price of this. So under a hundred bucks, lubed milk yellow switches, always a treat, definitely worth it by the way. Um, stabilizers, they were kind of inconsistent, I felt, uh, but again, they are plate mount. So the stock stabilizers here aren't that good. But like I said, I've heard a lot worse, pretty content overall for the price. Now, I mentioned before, it has RGB, and it does unfortunately have proprietary software, so it's not VIA or QMK compatible, they have their own Homu software or something. Inside here is where you can go in and create different profiles, you can create macros, uh, reprogram keys, all that stuff, so if you are into doing that, and you can, you know, reassign the keys to be certain macros if you want, pretty much, what I would do is just, you know, create a layer of RGB, create your macros, and then delete it, and it'll be saved to the board. So you can use the board and whatever lighting effects you've saved or anything, but not have to actually have the software going, which is good. They do have a pretty good amount of RGB lighting to pick from. I'll just run through a few real quick, and for each of the effects, if it's not like a static color, you can pick from it being like a random rainbow effect, where the colors that it uses are just, you know, randomized, or if you want the effect to be a, a single color, you can pick that as well. Um, unfortunately, I didn't see anywhere inside the software where you could change the color of the red underglow, side glow, and the volume knob ring. So I didn't see it. I don't know if you can at all. So it's just been stock red for me, but you know, really not a big deal. I did try to change all the lights white in here, so it would just be a lot more simple. Uh, but again, with the cheaper quality of the PCB, uh, it wasn't a pure white by any means. It was more like purple than anything, so I just have it blue. Nice and static, nice and simple. Um, that'll just quickly lead us into the cons, because you know I wasn't too happy with purple for white lighting. But again, like I said, it's what you kind of understand uh, you're getting at this price. So the PCB and the LEDs overall aren't the best. Um, it's not like an issue with the LEDs. If you have it on RGB or a different color, you'll be fine. But the fact that they're north facing is kind of a bummer. I did mention that, you know, most of you out there are going to be fine. Won't have any problems with that. 
It's just a certain uh, compatibility issue with different, you know, keycap profiles. But odds are you'll be okay. Uh, you would like it to be south facing, but at least it is five pin, you know? Other than that, I mean, yeah, the stock stabilizers definitely aren't good. So I would recommend looping them like I did. The stock plastic case also doesn't sound the best, which is why I recommended um, like foam or polyfill or anything. But hell, $98 when I bought it. So let's talk about that real quick for the price roundup. Originally, it was $44. Uh, when I bought it, it was $48, but then there was a $2 like new member discount code. So I got this for $46. Bucks. Recently, I saw on AliExpress that the price jumped a bit to $58 or $55, right around there. Uh, but they also added different options. You can now also get this uh, Bluetooth or wireless, and they added different colors, like, the, uh, like a clear transparent housing or like a clearish uh, blue transparent housing as well. So they are updating this, which is cool to see. But the price now, due to people making videos and it getting a lot more you know, hype in the community, prices is unfortunately going up. Uh, 16 bucks, like I said, for the Gateron Milky Yellow um, switches. Really hard to complain. $36 for the Konmomo knockoff set. Also pretty good price. If you want to do some extra cosmetic things, like adding a coil cable, you know, sure. I know Glorious has their cables for $50. Uh, I used a white, what was it, a Seni cable for like $25. Bucks. Again, it's not necessary but it's just an extra visual modification if you wanna do that, sort of take it visually to the next level. And in terms of like lube and stuff like that, um, you can get Crytox anywhere from like eight to $12. So if you do want to actually, you know, lube your milky yellow switches, like I would recommend, um, then you would sp spending an extra like 10 bucks for the lube. But all that cosmetic stuff and extra things aren't necessary. You can pick up any keycap set uh, and really any switch as well and add it to this without the mods. The mods only gonna make it sound and feel better. So guys, the TM680, the Tom680, feature packed for just around a hundred bucks. Mine, $98. Today, probably closer to like 115-ish with the price fluctuations, which is really, really hard to complain and uh, happy with it overall. So if you wanna check it out, I have all the hardware and stuff listed for you in the description down below and hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. Last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed, have a good day.